Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Peter Isesele and I have a very special guest with me today. Can you introduce yourself a little bit? Hello everyone, uh, my name is um, Mosje Paul Ibogun. You must have seen myself from the previous video. A TA experience, a oh, experience. Oh man, that's, I absolutely enjoyed that. I absolutely enjoyed teaching. That has been one of my best experiences as a grad student. Um, I, I, I TA, so my first year I TA general chemistry. Then second year I TA um, organic chemistry and it's been amazing. It's a lot of work, but it's very valuable um, for me at least. Um, I really enjoyed TA. So TA, the first TA, my first year general chemistry, um, it, again, it's, it, was, it was interesting, it was fun. It was a bit challenging though. Um, there's some things, for example, with chemistry, there's a way we are taught how to do, for example, dimensional analysis and it's something slightly different from how they teach them here. Yeah. So I didn't have to go study on how they teach them here and teach dimensional analysis that way during my lab. So I teach the chemistry labs. Mm -hmm. um, I had to present at the beginning of the lab. So that actually helped my communication skills because every lab, I had to come present to the students. I had 48 students per lab. Um, then uh, I became more confident in my communication. I was able to present. Um, I had to grade. Then my second year I taught organic chemistry. Um, well, same thing, communicating, um, teaching, um, helping the students with the experiments, responding to emails on time. Um, so for me, um, so different departments for chem at chemistry, university chemistry, yeah. um, part of, of your funding comes from your TA, right? And your TA involves both teaching and grading. Absolutely. Some other departments I know of, um, they only the grade only grade yeah so uh, for for my department it depends on what you're giving okay right so sometimes they can say just labs mm -hmm. some other one you have to uh maybe they call it lab demonstration if it's like a pure lab mm -hmm. right yeah then some other ones you have to mark reports yeah you know some other ones you can you have been required to take like maybe like maybe tutorials yeah. or something like that but you always have to make sure you know the terms and conditions yeah. and the responsibility for that particular course so you don't yeah. go and <laughs> don't go and do what <laughs> you are not authorized to do yeah yeah, yeah and, and you want to like um prepare i i i find it for for me it was not crazy it was like it was okay it was fine i could do it because like i do think i got good background in chemistry you know so i was able to teach some things were slightly different that I had to go back and review, which is fine. Yeah. Um, but I found that even valuable for me. For example, organic chemistry, um, to do research in organic chemistry, you need those basics, absolutely, really. Absolutely. So yeah. having to go back to study those basics and review on them is fine for me. And I found those very useful for me. So the TA, um, as Peter said, you make sure you check the responsibilities, make sure you are ready, make sure you are prepared to go to your lab. You're going to have students are going to ask you very good questions. You don't look like you don't, you are not prepared. Absolutely. At the end of the term, my university, they do an evaluation. Absolutely. They anonymously evaluate you as a TA mm -hmm. and you get the evaluation at the end. I mean, not everybody will like you eventually. No, it's, it's normal. <laughs> it's a normal thing. Yeah. So, yeah. but generally, you can look at the average and see how well you are performing. Yeah. Same thing I've seen from my first, if I look at my evaluation from my first year, Evolution, um, I've gotten a vibrate of years. I've, I think I've been improving so much, which is the really what you want to do is improve every year for your TA. Absolutely. And another thing you need to understand about there, there's a lot of policy, yeah. you know, regarding how you interact with students. Yeah, so as a teaching assistant, that's one of the things my friend told me. He said, just do your job and get out. Yeah. Okay, you don't have time to be asking somebody's personal questions, yeah. you know, communicating with them on social media. No, you don't yeah. you don't do those things. You don't even you know in Nigeria, you know, you can be teaching a student and you can say you don't even understand this thing, right? No, so you yeah. don't you don't do those things here, right? So T is the first point you learn to be professional. Absolutely. That's absolutely, the first absolutely. point you learn to be professional. Like you you have to be professional. Like T A for me is mm -hmm. I used to tell people my grad school experience, the highlight for me was, you know, when I had the opportunity of doing TA, 
you know and sometimes you just have to you have to humble yourself because there are some techniques that we do in the lab that for the students you know you've not done them before right mm -hmm. so most of the time you have to go learn it yourself maybe yeah. a couple of days before the actual day of the of the of the program of the, uh, the class and yeah. then on that day then you do the experiment and then you yeah. do like a professional yeah right and then when, maybe there are things you don't understand or if, if they ask you questions you don't have answers to it, um, you know it's still it's still good to reach out to like there is a lab you know coordinator yeah. for that part of every course have the, like that yeah. lab coordinator that you can always reach out to yeah. you know for help and assistance you know and then when when grading that's one of the when I learned about grading here that students like they they can request for you to say or maybe they got something wrong uh, right and you marked it wrong or you don't mark it fairly you know maybe based on where we are coming from once you mark something and a student is coming to tell you you come come on get out of here you know all those kind of things but mm -hmm. here you have to be systematic in your marking it has to be consistent it has yeah. to be consistent you know um if you get a rubric for marking so it has to be followed precisely yeah. you know so that you make sure that you mark those things correctly and then you know if there are necessary comments or feedback you know you can give the necessary feedback i mean the overall goal is to help the student to grow right so yeah. if you are doing that you know it's if for, I mean, the, the way it works for us in my department it's i think it's a little bit different from how it works so if they give you a teaching assistant position, mm. it's a different money. Okay. So they pay you separately, depends on the number of hours that you do. That is actually different. So different from the research. funding from the funding that you get from your supervisor. Oh yes, yeah, same. Yeah. 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 Yeah, same for us. It's different. You get paid for research separately. Yeah. Then you get paid for Absolutely. CA separately. Yeah. But on your funding letter, mm. the money there mm. is um research. both research yeah. and, yeah. and yeah. CA for us. Yeah. yeah. So it used to be a very we used to kind of you know when we are when the department send out the sign up for a teaching assistant you know you always have to get them because it's extra cash for you right mm -hmm. it's going to be a lot of work i trust me mm -hmm. sometimes i there are days i stay till like 8 p.m 9 p.m just yeah. to finish marking the report because it's due the following morning right yeah. you can't say oh i don't I, I don't have time to mark yeah. you know so you have to mark Again, and, you, have to, and, you have to be professional and everything is going to be entered in the system right yeah. so they can track how much you know they are they are progressing and i used to tell the students you guys are fortunate or you don't know you know imagine you know first and second year students already doing you know some electrophoresis mm -hmm. already doing some of these things that we even got to do when we started doing our masters mm -hmm. right so you know so that those are some of the things you get to learn while doing a teaching assistant you know so make sure you you know i was teaching assistant teaching assistant for a biochemistry course Mm -hmm. you know i really loved it but one of the things that the way we like i mentioned the way they teach is different you know is the same lineage that we are using but there were some things when i was doing biochemistry that i felt they were too difficult that the professors did not teach so when i got here uh, the professors were actually teaching right yeah. some of those things with slides that's all that's also another thing yeah i was not used to teaching with slides yeah. and going for to classes with slides you know but here you have to teach students with slides and have to make slides powerpoint and and other things so it's a skill yeah. that you have to learn you know your presentation skill and mm. and things like that is really really going to it is really going to help you and there's also like a there's a higher level of teaching assistant which almost almost <laughs> yeah I want to share a little bit about that um, teacher, what teacher scholar doctoral fellowship. Okay, so how, I, how is it like? I got a teacher scholar doctoral fellowship last year, um, okay. and I was um, employed as a sessional lecturer in the Department of Chemistry um, to teach organic chemistry. So basically, you are, as a, you get um, employed to teach, not teaching assistant, to lecture organic chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I taught a full time organic chemistry. So it involved um, course design. Um, I made that to make PowerPoint, I had to teach the full term class, um, work on their meetings, work on their um, final exam. Although for me, my, I, we had multiple sections and I was working with other profs teaching that section. That really helped me because they already had good templates to work with. So I had the professors who actually guide, were guiding me. I had my own section I was teaching. So um, that was a really new experience because now um, I was basically 
um, design a class almost um, the way a faculty member would do that. So I had to design a class, how to look at um, work with. So that's when I realized, like working with the um, syllabus, mm -hmm. you work so much with time. Absolutely. Like I'm like Absolutely. by week two, or week you have to cover this topic. Right, so you need to find with quite a topic. Yeah, yeah. Um, you need to with find quite topics. So you really, you cannot every single class. You need to be there yeah. covering that those topics. You need to respond. So you have to have office time. I have to have office time for students to meet me. Um, usually, I did my office time for during um, mostly on Zoom because um, we're just coming out of COVID. Meet on Zoom, we'll go through questions. Um, I had to sometimes do extra tutorials. Um, so it was a much different experience. This was more, that's when I was like, oh, T is, you go and you teach enough as a um, doctoral fellow or um, with um, a sessional lecturer, you have to really like teach the full time class. But mm -hmm. that was really, really valuable for me because I get to be, I get, got to build the teaching portfolio. Yeah, yeah, I got so, to work on my EDI statements, my teaching philosophy statements. These are things you need really um, to grow um, if you want to stay in. Um, academia. academia in, in mm -hmm. Canada, so yeah. Absolutely, that was a very it's high level, you know. So you know, if you, for just normal teaching assistant, you are not necessarily the one that developed the syllabus, you know, and the materials, right? But yeah. in this case, you have to be one that will kind of develop the, the you know uh, the materials, you know, do all the PowerPoint slides and, yeah. and everything. So it's actually like high level. So for those that are, that, love, that love teaching, you know, it's only available for. Students for yeah, the most part. it depends. Most it depends on your program and school. My school, my department, um, you actually is actually like a filter, almost like a competition you enter for. Like you have like a lot of I. I was actually quickly like my prof really mm. worked on me on the application thanks to him, um, because it's like a competition. You are you are entering with like really like other top level doctoral students who have like so much experience in teaching. Um, so I think they pick, they pick maybe maximum of number maximum of students. Then in my school, most times it's PhD students. There are still some schools where even master students uh, in some programs, not maybe that are in some specific programs, yeah, yeah. are given the opportunity. But again, you have to look at if you want to find that email the department secretary, they That's have the all the information. Yeah. The department secretary, they are the best. Oh, man. They have all the information, oh, they, they give you the information that oh, man. Yeah. you have to get. Everything, you know, yeah. just send out an email. So let's end with this, okay? Yeah. Uh, if you have any question, always ask, okay? Always yeah. ask question. Don't say, I'm trying to figure it out myself. I will not ask questions. You're just going to spend a lot of time, you know, waste a lot of time. So ask questions in areas that are not clear. It is really, really going to help you, you know? I think we want to try to end this video for now because if we want to continue talking is we can continue talking forever, you know, like it's for a very long time. So once again, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned from it, you know, do it to hit the subscribe button. And if you've not liked the video, do it to like the video, you know, give it a thumbs up so that it will help my YouTube algorithm so that whenever we, we new videos are released, you'll be the first person to get notified of my video. Once again, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.